And I got an opportunity to really kind of hang out with these guys last night. And these two guys are just down to earth people. Really relaxed, calm, cool, collected. He's out of Jocelyn's MMA up in Canada. Another one of these Canadian athletes who are making their way down here to compete. It's such a welcome, welcome sign, yep. you know, to have these athletes come across the border. A, it's showing that there's some more normalcy in the world, but also it's attracting different people from around, around the area. I mean, I remember, Jay, when it started around here, you know, the furthest team out was like MBMMA. Yep. You know, you didn't have people coming from all around. Canada? There's people from Canada? <laughs> oh, we, you would have never thought about that before. No. Once people started coming from Springfield, they thought it was a huge deal. Yep. Yeah, I think I was the furthest. No, a couple of kids from Boston would would travel to Burlington Bra. I was the second longest trip. Just the lone cornerman, too, by the looks of things. Lone cornerman. I don't know if that's because they couldn't make the trip down. Well, yeah, All that's right. a long trip, Canada. Oh. Yeah, it is. I think that was the first time him putting Vaseline on the face, too, I'm going to say. Well, and the referee will check that because for the yeah. folks at home, so that you know, you're supposed to put Vaseline around the eyes, almost like a raccoon circles, just there. Back in the day, I've worked with coaches where they would purposely Vaseline the, the, the athlete's whole face Please. and their back. I had one coach, I, I worked with him, he would Vaseline the whole back. GSP's grease gate comes oh. to mind. Yep, you couldn't do grease gate nowadays. No. All right, we're waiting for Nemo, a crowd favorite. Tapping don't, don't Nels Larson it, again. Don't let Nemo's record fool you. He's a dangerous man. Very, very dangerous. He's a very dangerous individual. And it's one of those things, like, if you don't like Nemo, you are the problem. Not Nemo. Like, <laughs> you're the problem if you don't like Nemo. He's a national treasure. We see more people with these Karen Thailand of USA shirts. Shout out to the whole tribe. You know, and he it's grew up fighting. It was part of his culture. The Burma culture out there. The border of what? Burma, Thailand. I told, that, told that's, the story about jumping off the tree. Or, I mean, the vines tied around your legs. That, that's where uh, Muay Thai, Les Way are just rampant. Yep. You're kicking trees in the backyard at three years old. And here he is. Nemo Mong, perhaps one of the nicest people you'll ever meet and Absolutely. not be able to communicate with. Yep. Hugs and uh, handshakes are the best uh, communication. And show, shows the respect are universal. You know, you bow, you do whatever. Universal. Nod your head in, in, uh, in respect. There's always ways to communicate with martial artists. Yep. Yeah, we had quite the complicated handshake when I went and seen him in the back earlier with it and then I went to walk away it was like a stepbrother thing where they're like trying to hug and it's like awkward yeah he was sitting down and I'm still like this. <laughs> I like his tattoo work I know that's not part of this but it's okay to like his tattoo work man we won't hold it against you well good to know I was gonna lose sleep over that tonight Shout out to my brother Nick watching back at home. Brandon Only, Teresa Fox, all the people back there up north. I love you guys. We'll see you soon. Shout out to Will Berry for coming on our podcast next week. We're going to see. I heard about that last show. I'm doing fucking. Thank you, because Cheech is too busy getting high. Are we have Will Berry? Who's that? Will Berry. Will Berry what? What are you burying? I don't know if Jason Carson can hear me all the way back in Forest Point, but we're we love you, buddy. We're going to bring it up to Mike Falvo. Ladies and gentlemen, the next fight on the card, scheduled for three three-minute rounds, is in our featherweight division. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in yesterday 143.8 pounds. Representing Jocelyn's Mixed Martial Arts, out of Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, Alex Gluzman. 
And his opponent standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in last night 143 pounds even, representing Mohawk Valley Mixed Martial Arts out of New Hartford, New York, Nien Neymong. There's the name of connotation in there. And the man in charge of the action when that door closes, Mr. Nels Larson. I butchered his name for like the first two shows, and I saw Duff in the casino one night. He's like, hey, it's Nemo. I was like, oops. <laughs> and is this Nemo's last ride, maybe? Let's not talk like that. I pissed off my sister by not giving her a shout out. Love you too, Anna. All right, let's see how this goes. I really hope this isn't the swan song for Nemo. I'd love to see this guy stick around, but selfishly, I like to watch this guy fight. Well, and if you notice, this time he's, he's staying a little bit more squatted. He's yep. not rushing the strikes. Look at the size of that man's calves. They're the size of my calves, and I'm a lot heavier in the thighs. His calves are the size of me. Dude's friggin' jacked. That's what happens when you kick banana trees. Yep. You know, he's kicking trees for fun, and, like, I stub my shin on the fucking tailgate of a truck, and I'm done for a month. He's definitely got the uh, reach disadvantage here. Yep. As is the case, though, with a lot of Namos fights. He's, but he's always a tactician when he comes in. He's always calculated. He doesn't over-pursue things. But as you see, you know, Gluzman's in that uh, southpaw stance, mm -hmm. Namo in the orthodox stance. That really opens up that left hand if Namo's not careful. You know, uh, the one thing I would do if I was Namo right now is start to look at that lead leg a little bit. On Inside leg because, Yeah, because he's awful long in his stance. Yep. He's trying to close the distance with that right hand, and that's not the way to close that distance. What would you say to make the adjustment to him, then, if you were in the corner? I, I would tell him to faint. I would tell him to slip and throw. Don't just throw to get in. You know, faint with the hips, make him freeze for a, a split second. You've got to make him react to you. Yeah, he's telegraphing that right hand. And him, being yeah. the shorter man, he sees it from a mile away. Yep. Nemo worked his way up to a Bantamweight title fight at Cage Wars 39 against Tache Guthro. Unfortunately, that go his way. We know Nemo would probably like to get back to that title fight. Nice right hand. Piss I think you pissed him off a little bit there. You know, and, and that roundhouse to the inside of the thigh uh -huh. is good, but that lead leg kick for Namo is there. I mean, he could lead leg calf kick all day. Does the size difference in the legs make a difference in that, Will? Like, could well, Namo do more damage? It's all in the hips. Quicker. It's all in the hips, but somebody like that that knows how to use them, oh, yeah. Yeah, his gait is a lot, a lot more uh, conditioned than most people in his weight class. Going you high. Know, some of the crowd getting a little bit upset with the lack of action, but again, you know I'd what? I'd like to see them in here with Nemo or with, with Or Goldman. vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Pick. I mean, you got to be careful because this can end at any given moment. They're not being cautious. Yep. There's the smile from Nemo. They're being aware. Nice job using that left shoulder for Nemo as a defensive tool. And really, it's only the ignorance of the casual fans that you'll hear yelling stupid things. It won't be any of the people that actually know what's going on. Nemo's got to keep that chin down, though. Wow, nice fast Ooh, entry. Right here in front of us. Namo right. using that head. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say in between rounds, Duff says utilize that kick more. Utilize the kick more. Yep. I got to give that round to Gluzman. What do you yep. think? Yeah, I would say. I mean, it wasn't a, a huge decisive round, but it was definitely a, a good round for Gluzman. Nell's talking to Gluzman about making sure he leaves with the fingers up and not out. It, was a, it looks like a hard warning there right off the bat. And, you know, that's something we see across all mixed martial arts. You know, there's been a lot of talks about trying to increase or uh, trying to change the glove. Right. But, but the dynamics of MMA needing to be able to grapple with those open hands, you know, glove manufacturers are really kind of stuck because they keep your hands out like this. And the, the Trevor Whitman glove. Trying it on, even like the regular boxing glove. Al, Al has one. Yep. Oh my God! Like it's utilized. It's you'd be amazed at it. It just it doesn't like these. You know, you had them on. It makes your hands yeah. open up. These ones, 
the, the the MMA gloves actually you can grapple better with them. Now, the one thing I expect to see more out of Guzman here is more of that explosion, because he was fast when he entered yeah. and pushed him against the cage. Now that he's comfortable, I expect to see a little bit more of that. I feel like that round was definitely a great feeling out process for both these guys. We'll yeah. probably get a definite uptick in the action here. And if you notice, you know, that's one thing I never liked is if somebody grabs that lead hand and holds it, get it off your hand. Because nothing's yeah. going to come of that for you if you're Namo. No. And again, reptile brain. Now Namo's trying it, you know, like... Ooh, that hard leg his kick legs, there. His kicks, dude. But again, I'd like to see him use that lead leg kick. That's hurt him when he kicks him. That's the thing. Blue's, Blue's been doing a good job keeping the distance. Ooh, nice in walk. Long stance, though. Kick that it's front leg. Legs, it's open all day long. But again, he's using the rear leg, so Guzman sees it coming. You do a quick step in, use that lead leg, calf he's kick. the timing down here. You can tell that Guzman's not putting a lot of weight down on that lead leg. Almost halfway through this second round. He's very wise to circle away from the power in Nemo. I just certainly want to, wouldn't want to catch when a Nemo strikes full force. Now, but Guzman's doing a good job. He's waiting for Nemo to throw that left hand, and it's not coming back soon enough, so he's catching him. Sure. Nemo says bring it. He's got to utilize that leg. Leg is open all day long. Good jab, good jab. He's got to keep that chin down. There we go. Nemo says let's fight. He's looking to go to the body. You know, Glue's been doing a good job working in, in circles, using the angles, just staying out of range of those big shots. Yeah. Nemo getting thrilled here. Look at him telling him to hit him. The thing is, is he, he's got his chin up. It looks he like the keeps beast. working that body shot in the same spot. Oh, that's over The hand. beast in Namo is awoken here, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that, walking forward, the hands down. You know, and that's great, the showboating, but at the yeah. same time, you got to do something with it. Because right now, exactly. you know, you're still losing. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't worry about the punches. He's winding up, though, on a lot of those shots, and he's not really doing anything to set him up. There we go, that feint. We need him to react. Yep. He's using that. Oh, ye ask and ye shall receive. If you're Nemo, what combination are, are you setting up before you throw that massive winding overhook there, Jay? He needs to use his jab to throw. He, when you throw that right, like we said before, he's a shorter guy, so you're seeing that right coming from a mile, a mile away. away. You got to you got to sneak it in with you know a double short jab. Short right hand. Short, there we go, body lock for Nemo. Oh, there nice job. There we go, and right at the end of the round, okay. too. That could mean a lot to the judges. Yeah. That, but it also gives Nemo some confidence. Yeah. I mean, Much well, more so than the end of the first round. And you know Duff's going to yell at him for showboating a little bit. They didn't even bring the stool in into the blue corner here. That says a lot, at least in my opinion. Uh, no, I agree. There's there's no real concern of their, their athlete being tired. Now Duff has to show him what's going on because he cannot speak English. He's telling him, kick the front leg. The same fake the kick, go with the right hand. Like we were talking exactly. about, that, you got to fake and go yeah, with you, it. You, you can't, can't throw just, it out there naked. You just can't throw stuff out like that. You're set. You're basically given the tell before you even throw it because you're. And you're allowing your opponent to pick their defensive strikes. Yep. We saw it earlier. And if you're a good counter striker. With Brown versus Moses. You can get a one and done. It's a lot less likely down here at this weight class, but I, I think Nemo really needs to start setting up his combinations. Oh, yeah. To be able to get that finish, that, in my that's opinion, what, that he could what Duff be right is now. Going over in the corner, too. Nemo's got a little bit of blood from the nose leaking. Yep. Very happy about it, you can see. See, and he's waiting yeah. for that left hand to come out and just coming over with the right hand from the southpaw stance. That leg kick, oh. What's that? That leg kick is open all day. It's is that bugging you guys? It's bugging as, as very, 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 very good strikers because yourself. 
Yeah. I, 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 Even yeah. if you weren't a kicker, it's open all day. It's wide and it's open. And Nemo could take a step out to the left and come back in and chop the uh. outside of that leg. Ooh, there we go. Three of them, dude. That's all you need. Make him react, and they should have threw a punch there. Yep. Make him react to lift leg right hand, just like Duff was saying. Let's see what we can get here in this third and final round. Foul brought to you by Stimulus. Nemo game, but he's breathing through the mouth now, having some difficulties breathing through that nose. It's going to cut down on your cardio. Body shit. Ooh, stepped into that one. If it could have landed, it could have spelled trouble for Gluzman, but he was able to shake that one off. And again, you know, Gluzman's just timing him. He's waiting for it. He's reacting. He's following him back in with those strikes. I got to say, he's executing at a much higher level. Halfway through this third and final round. Namo's starting to... They checked that one. But again, you check one of Namo's kicks, it's still going to hurt. Mm -hmm. It's better than taking it, but... You can see he's following the advice of Duff Holmes, at least a little bit here with those leg kicks. But he's, he's running out of time. Coming up on 60 seconds left. Final minute. And again, you're watching him timing. Even though he missed Nemo, he's timing him. We need to see more off-rhythm strikes. We need to see more feints on Nemo's part. And again, more kicks. That body shot. But a little late for that, though. That's too, way too late. Coming That's up really, on 30 seconds. It, the body strikes are an investment you should really start making in the beginning, correct? Absolutely. They wear down your opponent early. The telegraphing it. Inside leg kick. Now throw the inside leg kick. Now. Gotta have some sense of urgency. Final uh -huh. 10 seconds. Oh, oh wow. wow. Again, the timing of Gloosman is just impeccable here. All right, fight's over. Whoa. Nels had the sprint there. Yeah, the, the timing on Gluzman is just, I mean, it was superb, yeah. this whole fight. The Kept rhythm, composer, the timing. Didn't, over, didn't overcompensate stuff. He didn't overcommit? Yeah, overcommit. He, That's he, what I was looking for. Oh, I, I didn't mean <laughs> I wasn't correcting you. Um, you know, I mean, he just had the rhythm. He had, he had his opponent's rhythm. He had his own rhythm. He was firing on all cylinders tonight. The timing, sure. yeah, everything looked great. I'd like to see him back here very soon. So so now, where does Nemo go? I, man, I don't know. I, that's kind of a heartbreaking conversation at this point, really. Um, yeah, he's up there in, what, 41, 42 years yeah. old now. He drops to, what, 2, 5, and 1. And again, records aren't everything. It depends yeah. what he wants to do with it. Yeah. Doctor that, that, checking out. That's a conversation him and Duff will have to have through his translator or whatever. But. I'd say I would give what? I would give him the second round? Yeah, I would go 29-28 Gloosman. Yeah. You know, and, and it's unfortunate because if he changed that third round, he could have won. You know, oh, so yeah. it was nice to see him competitive at least. You know, yeah. he wasn't in a position where he was held down by a wrestler or a grappler who didn't want to fight, just wanted to hold him. You know, he fought he somebody who was willing to engage with him. Yep. And he actually and, had a takedown. And he did. Oh, yeah, Namo had a takedown, which is not, not <laughs> always uh, right. common for him. Yep. Great shows of sportsmanship. Waiting for the scorecards. Shoot it up to Mike Falvo. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for these two great fighters? And after three rounds of mixed martial arts action, we go to the judges' scorecard. Judge Jonathan Bernard scores the fight 30-27.
Rob Exisa scores the fight 29-28. And Chris Polinski scores the fight 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision. Out of the blue corner, Alex Galuzman.